HPing is an excellent command line oriented TCP IP packet assembler analyzer. The interface is inspired by the ping 8 Unix command, but HPing isn't only able to send ICMP echo requests. It supports TCP, UDP, ICMP, and raw IP protocols, has a trace route mode, the ability to send files between a covered channel, and many other features. So, a subset of the stuff you can do using HPing firewall testing, advanced port scanning, network testing using different protocols, TOS fragmentation, manual path MTU discovery, advanced trace route under all the supported protocols. Remote OS fingerprinting, remote uptime guessing, and don't forget TCP IP stacks auditing. HPing can also be useful to students that are learning TCP IP. Although it's a packet analyzer tool, it's widely used for DOS, denial of service, tests, and attacks to create IP spoofed packets and send them to the target system. Let's see how we can use the HPing command to scan the network simply. Go to Kali and open a terminal screen. HPing 3 is embedded into Kali and defined in the path, so you can use it anywhere, just typing the name of the command HPing 3. Type HPing 3-H or HPing 3-Help to see the detailed usage of the HPing 3 command. Let's look at a few parameters important for scanning mode. Under the mode title, we have a scan mode and the help shows a sample usage of the mode as well. We'll use scan or 8 parameter to use HPing in scan mode. Under TCP UDP title, we have the parameters to set the flags of TCP or UDP packets. Well, you'll see the flags and meaning in this course in following lectures, so just see the HPing in action now. For example, uppercase S or SYN parameter is used to set the SYN flag of TCP or UDP packets. Let's prepare the HPing command to make a network scan. The first parameter is scan to use HPing in scan mode. Here we should say in which ports we will scan. In this example, 0 to 500 means that the ports between 0 and 500 will be scanned. You can give a port range like this with a dash between the lower bound and the upper bound. Or you can give the ports one by one separating them by a comma. Or you can use a combination of these two. Now I want to set the SYN flag of the packet because all TCP connections start with a SYN packet. Well again, we'll show you how a TCP handshake is made later on in the following lectures. But here comes the IP address to scan. Hit enter to start the scan. Here we have the responding ports, and the flags column says what the reply is. We sent SYN packets and get SYN ACK packets. That means ports are accessible and open to us. Now let's make another scan. This time, I'll use uppercase X to make a Christmas scan. In the scan, push, urgent, and fin flags are set in the packet, which is not seen in regular traffic. Since the packets they received are not valid packets, they've dropped them and returned no response. Although it's not the subject of our course, because it's very common usage, I'd like to show you how to perform an IP spoofed DOS or denial of service attack using the HPing tool. I'm going to attack my own server. First, I'll test if I can connect to the application. So open a terminal screen and ping the application www.owaspbwa.com. Okay, I have a connection through the application. Open a browser and visit the website. Here I click a few links to show the response time of the server. Oh, okay, it's really fast. It responds as soon as I click onto links. Now let's prepare the HPing command to prepare a DOS attack. The first parameter of the command is dash flood. You know what? Let's run HPing 3 dash help in another terminal screen to see the meanings of the parameters. 
Flood parameter is used to send packets as fast as possible. To make it a SYN flood attack, I set the SYN flag using dash S parameter. When I send a SYN packet, since it's a legitimate TCP handshake starter, the server will try to respond to all the packets at the start of the TCP communication. So the server will be very, very busy. Dash V is to open verbose mode. That means we'd like to see the results of sent packets. The next parameter is RAND source. This parameter will randomize the source IP addresses as if they are requested by different systems. So the attack is distributed, denial of service now. And since the IP addresses are random, the victim doesn't know about you. Give the target domain as a last parameter. Oh, by the way, the order of the parameters is not important. Hit Enter to start the attack. Now, because we're in flood mode, no replies are shown. Let's try to click a few links to see the response time of the server while it's under attack. Click a link. It's waiting, waiting, waiting. It's obviously so down. Maybe our request will be timed out? So this is how a simple denial of service attack is performed. I'll stop the flood by stopping the run of the command using control C keys. As you see, in less than a minute, we sent more than a million SYN packets to the victim server. No packets received because we randomized the source IP addresses of the packets. That means the responses were sent to different IP addresses. This is why we didn't receive any packets. Since I stopped sending packets, the server is now responding in good time again. Now let's repeat the attack while Wireshark is running to see what's happening under the hood. Start Wireshark. Since we're using the ETH0 interface of Kali, I'll double-click the ETH0 on the home screen to start to listen to the traffic passing through the ETH0 interface. There's still some packets on the queue because of our previous attack. I restart capturing by pressing the green button at the upper left corner of Wireshark to clean the screen before the second attack. Continue without saving. Okay, Wireshark is running and clean. We're ready to repeat the attack. You can see the number of packets at the bottom of Wireshark. As you see, we sent hundreds of thousands of packets in seconds.